Not too far from my house, just over in Enfield, Connecticut, there used to be a Shaker village. Perhaps the most iconic piece of furniture to come out of that village looked a lot like this one. I've always liked it, and I always wanted to make one for myself, but I also knew that I wanted to give it a personal spin. And that's why I added two small drawers on the inside. They also make the inside more useful. But I didn't want those drawers to stick out too much, so to tie them into tradition, I painted the fronts with blue milk paint. I really like the color you get from milk paint. It's variated and has a little bit of life and almost some texture to it. It really looks great when you finish it off with some wax. You get a nice, rich color. I'll show you how I did it. As with any finishing technique, you got to get started with surface prep. I'm going to do that with a hand plane. Before the application of milk paint, it's important to plane away any milling marks. Once that's done, a quick sanding with 220 grit paper is all you need. Don't bother sanding any finer. The water-based milk paint will raise the grain, requiring additional sanding after the first coat. I'm only painting the front of the drawers. To keep the milk paint off the sides and the edges, all you need is a little bit of blue tape. Press the edge of the tape down firmly. You don't want any paint bleeding back underneath it. You can't beat the variety of period colors available in milk paint. The fact that it can be mixed up in small batches is a nice bonus. The powder is mixed with water at a one-to-one -one ratio. Once you've thoroughly mixed the paint, let it sit for at least five minutes. After you've let the paint sit for a while, come back and check its viscosity. You want it to be a little thinner than latex paint. Mine looks just about right, but don't worry if yours comes out too thick. Just add more water, and if it comes out too thin, add a little more powder. Before you start painting, it's a good idea to pre-moisten the brush. That way the paint flows more easily off of it. These golden Taclon brushes are easy to find at art supply houses, and they really do a nice job with milk paint. Keep in mind that the first coat of paint may not entirely cover the wood, but don't worry, the second coat will. I've let the paint dry. It takes about an hour or two. I'm going to hit it with some 320 grit sandpaper, and then I'll put on a second coat. After the second coat dries, sand it, and then put on a third coat. I've just sanded the third coat of paint, but before I move on to the next step, I like to burnish the paint with a bit of steel wool. The steel wool brings the whole surface a little bit smoother and gives it all a consistent sheen. After I've wiped off the dust from the steel wool, I like to apply a little bit of paste wax. It makes the milk paint a nice, rich color, and it also gives it a really good luster that I like. If a wax finish isn't quite your cup of tea, there's something else you could do instead to get that deep, rich color. You can add a bit of Danish oil to the top. It's a little shinier, but it still looks nice. 